serve us off with praise. How about you? Can we get God to praise in the house tonight? I think we can do better than that. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but I just came to praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but I just came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I was thinking about that word today. Every country, every nation knows what the word hallelujah means. I thank God that we know what hallelujah means. And I thank God that we can say praise the Lord and, and be happy in Jesus because we have every right to be happy in Jesus. That's right. Amen. Let me tell you something tonight, church. You've got to understand something. We don't have to take a back seat to the devil because we are a child of the King. Amen. Amen. We are a child of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I thank God that I'm a child of the King. Amen. I want to want to give God a praise report. Yesterday I went to the lung doctor and uh, he checked me out and he said there was nothing to worry about. Uh, the nodules that are in there and are cancerous. He said just live your life and do all everything you want to do. Praise the Lord. So I thank God for that. Amen. Amen. I was just thinking, uh, uh, Brother playing that song a few moments ago there, uh, he was playing in about 18th gear, and I thought I'd need a, a, a vapor to uh, go ahead and get my voice tonight with that song. Amen. <laughs> Praise, the Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad for the Lord tonight? Give me one more hand clap and pray. We can't give God too much praise. Can you say Amen. amen. We want to open our service this evening with prayer. We thank everyone for joining in and, and joining in online. And we thank God for each and every one of you. I just want you to know tonight that I love each and every one of you with all of my heart. Because if I can't love you, then I can't go to heaven. And if you can't love me, you can't go to heaven. So I know you love me tonight because you want to on your way to heaven. Amen. Father, we come before you tonight in the lovely name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thanking you, Father, for all your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for each and every one that's a sin here tonight in this congregation. Lord, we thank you for those that are online tonight. We pray, Lord, that you would bless each and every one, God, and especially God. And God, we ask you, Lord, that for the remainder of this service, God, that you have your way, that you would learn our way.
Pray for me. I have surgery <coughs> scheduled for next Wednesday to have a gallbladder removed, um, and work is not being very, um, I guess, generous with it or very understanding. Um, so just remember me, and also the girls. They lost a pet this week, so they're dealing with a, that loss. <coughs>
Let's also remember these devotions we've been having. They've been wonderful. Danny does such a wonderful job last night. I really did enjoy that. Amen. And um, so let's remember these, uh, the streamline and the people that are online tonight and that listen to the conference call. Uh, we thank God for each and every one that does listen in. Praise the Lord. Anyone else have a request?
that song I was thinking about, Pastor David. Hallelujah. Now, myself, I like to fly. Pastor David does not like to fly. Hey. If I would uh, book him a ticket to go to Vegas or somewhere with me, he'd say, no, I'm not going. Right. Cancel the booking. But when Jesus comes, hallelujah, you're not going to have to worry about being frightful of any height, brother. Oh, it's gone. We're going to take NASA. We're going to take NASA over when he comes back. After the church. Thank God. I said he's coming back after the church. Hallelujah. Yes. For the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be called up together to be with the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so glad tonight to know that he's going to come after me, dead or alive in the sea, or somebody killed me and buried me in a hole somewhere. I want you to know that God still knows where I'm at and knows where you're at. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm not your speaker tonight. I'm just getting excited. Oh, yes. It's all right to get excited. All right. yes. It's all right to say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to hear Danny say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 It's time that we get a life for Jesus. It's time to quit being shy and let God be God and every man alive. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like this in a lot of churches. That's why I'm not in any of the churches. I'm in church God there. Amen. Amen. Hey, man. Hey, we want to take up an offering tonight. And we want you to give us the Lord as a fresh few. You know, uh, you can outgive God. Amen. You cannot outgive God. He's proven it to me over and over and over and over. He's proven it to me. And I know that he has you. I'd like to have a couple of volunteers come and receive our evening tithe and offering. Hallelujah. In my prayers, I 
announcements. He did not. I said there's quite a few, so I wouldn't spring that on him tonight. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So don't forget about our service Sunday morning, Sunday school at 10, born worship at 11, Sunday night at 6. Be invited. Be telling the people Tuesday night conference call. We all know about Wednesday night family training hour. Be invited. Uh, Saturday morning, May the 15th, 9 o'clock, we've got church cleanup. Uh, need all the help we get. We'll take but a couple hours if everybody pitches in. Uh, May the 15th is a Saturday morning, 9 o'clock. Don't forget about that. The last Sunday of May, May the 30th, the last Sunday of May is um, we're going to have finger foods in the fellowship hall that evening, that night, after service uh, to honor uh, all the birthdays and wedding anniversaries for January through May. Uh, we'll try to do on the, that on the fifth Sunday, uh, months with fifth Sundays. So uh, May the 30th is our first one, so you bring out the finger foods and we'll eat the finger foods till they're gone or till we're full. So uh, on, the, on Sunday night, May the 30th, finger foods uh, for to honor birthdays and anniversaries uh, on that. Also, uh, coming up uh, not far from that, uh, or from, from now, on June the 5th, uh, we're going to have a, it's going to be a youth sponsored uh, yard sale uh, here at the church property. Um, what we're going to do is, uh, uh, as far as the, the, the donations or the monies uh, to rent a table, each table, each space is $10 per space uh, to put a table on. Uh, we've got some tables, we might run out or bring your own table, but each table, each spot is $10, and that money goes to uh, the youth, uh, youth fund goes for the youth, uh, but then everything that you sell on your table or your spots that you pay for a rental fee, then uh, you, that's your money. So basically, uh, I'm telling you, giving you a head notice if you want to be uh, cleaning out your closets, your buildings, your, uh, whatever you want to clean out, clear out, and if you got some goodies for the yard sale, uh, we'd love for you to uh, contribute $10 per space to uh, the youth fund, to the youth. Um, so uh, if you would like to rent a space or two or 20 or 40 or whatever, how many spaces you want, uh, if you got a bunch of buildings and you got a bunch of stuff, come on out. We'll make room. If we got to fill up every spot in the grass, every spot in the parking lot, every spot in the drop spot in the driveway, and, and, and we even got to borrow the neighbors over here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> we'll just we'll make sure it's not home right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But anyways, no. Um, so if you want to uh, rent a spot, please see Sheila or Angel and uh, to reserve your spot uh, for the uh, youth course. Or the youth funded yard sale. So, uh, so actually, the church is not um, as far as uh, uh, it's not church property for selling. The money is going to the church. It's uh, the youth are uh, taking uh, money for the rental spots, and then whatever you sell is your money. If you want to give it to the church or the youth, they will take it. But if you want to keep it and do what you want to with it, that's your business. All right, everybody understand that. Praise the Lord. One more now. Jesus is coming Sunday. Amen. He's coming back for a church, come back for a people that's looking for him, that's ready for his return. Yes. Hallelujah. Got something in the next week or so I'll be announcing we're going to do in May too. It's, it'll be exciting, so just be on you. Uh, uh, just be listening. Uh, something exciting we're going to do. Uh, Lord, been dealing with me today about it, so we're going to do this, and uh, I'll be announcing it in about a week or so. Uh, maybe, maybe Sunday, but uh, you'll, you'll have fun. And you'll let them enjoy it. So, praise the Lord. Have I missed any announcements? Praise the Lord. All right. If you'll stand with us tonight, we're going to worship the Lord and sing about it. We are standing on holy ground.
His mercy endures forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Glad to be here to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I appreciate it. Brother George helping me out with the preliminaries. Something we've started doing. Um, I'll be asking some more to be helping out with the preliminaries. Hallelujah. Good to have other people involved <coughs> and excited about what God is doing and how it's working. If you have your Bible, 2 Kings chapter 5. It's so good to see you in the house of the Lord. It's good to know that people are watching tonight. People will be viewing this week. So honored to be a Christian, first of all, and serve the Lord. So honored to be able to be here tonight with you in Norwood Church of God. Appreciate each and every one very much. My, oh my, God has been up to something lately. Yes, he has. He's still up to something. He's going to move. He's going to bless. I've got a, uh, a belief on that. Only one announcement I forgot. Praise the Lord. Just thought about that. Hallelujah. I guess she's behind me in the choir, but now I see her out right here. Sister uh, Candace, uh, at the meeting Sunday, we talked about uh, visitation. And uh, so we're trying to get some visitation going up. You know, it's spring. I uh, looked on the news today, and uh, they're fixing to uh, uh, cut out some of the, uh, the COVID restrictions. Hopefully by June the 1st, a lot more will be cut out. But anyways, uh, we're going to start some visitations. Uh, and so there's a sign-up sheet out here. If you would like to be on the visitation team, now it's not going to cost you a thing but a little time. And uh, and you'll be paired up with someone, two or three people. Um, Sister Candace is going to uh, head this up, and she's going to uh, be in charge of that. And she's got a little sheet out here. Uh, and, it's, and it wants your, it asks for your name and phone number, and it also asks for best time. If you if you would rather visit during the week than, than Saturday because you're not available on Saturday, uh, that's fine. Put put the day you're available, the hours that you might be available to do that, and she's going to kind of look at that and see who's compatible to go visit uh, um, for that and to visit. We're going to be visiting people that's non-church. We're going to visit people that's sick, people associated with church, all kinds of visiting. And so, and I'm going to be involved. I'm going, to, I'm going to be going to visit, but but naturally, I can't visit everybody, and Candace can't visit everybody, and so we we need help. And uh, so it's uh, it's very encouraging uh, to do this. Uh, and so um, so if you just fill that out, I would like for a lot of people to fill it out and and be be uh, involved. Uh, and when she sets up these teams, you know, it may not be where you go every week. You might go, if you do good during the week, it might be where you go this Tuesday, but you don't have to go again for about three weeks uh, or whatever, you know. And so, uh, so with that being said, there's also a little, little, little sheet back there. If you know someone that you would like visited, if you know they're not church or you know they're out, they're sick or whatever the case, and you want them visited, you need to fill out that form, uh, another little form, a little, little uh, piece of paper that says, a who and a, a good time to visit them and kind of their phone number and address uh, and uh, you know um, you know it, it kind of why they're visiting if it's because they're in church or it's because they're sick or it's because it's a, uh, you know they've got something going on indicate that and that way we'll have a uh, we'll be able to have an option now those uh, people who go visit those uh, names and all can be uh, you know it can be confidential so what we want to do is we have a beautiful wooden uh, box out here with a cross on it on our table in the vestibule. Uh, and we're going to, and it's going to serve two purposes. That box is supposed to be for prayer requests. We have, a, there's a lock on it that we can pray for over those special prayer requests. But we're going, but you take that paper, you put so-and-so's name on, reason for visiting, their address, I'll hold it up, put it in that box, and that'll be checked. Uh, and it'll be checked. So the council have a key, and I'll, I'll have a key in the office. And it'll be checked uh, weekly and to make sure we haven't missed anybody to go visit. So this is very important, so please, uh, please do that. Um, please do that. So uh, it's very important. Hey, let me, you can have a seat for just a minute. Okay. I'm sorry. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then I'm going to get you doing calisthenics and all that. Yeah. So, um, so, that, so, that, so we've got that going on. But uh, let me just tell you, Lord, Lord's giving me freedom. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you what Lord's laid on my heart what we're going to do. The, um, uh, I've just got to nail down the date. It'll be sometime in May, probably, uh, May or June. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have something that's called a Friends or Visitors Day. And so what that's going to consist of is on that Sunday morning, um, we're going to, uh, it's going to be kind of like a, a little contest. 
And so uh, we're going to have a contest, and we want all adults or children to be involved. And so um, <clears throat> what we're going to do is have you invite somebody that doesn't go to church or somebody that hasn't been here in six months. Uh, if they have not been here in six months, then they're, they're uh, fair game, if you will. You can invite them. And the adult that invites the most is going to get, to, going to get a monetary prize. Uh, and the child that invites the most people that morning or that day is going to get a prize. So it's going to be kind of a contest, but it also goes with our visiting. So uh, if you, uh, and, and I'm leaning towards the last Sunday in May, uh, May the 30th, that morning, Sunday morning. So, But I'll be announcing for sure the date, but I want to go ahead and put that in your head. So you think about some people you want to invite to church. Uh, adults uh, will be invited, children will be invited, but the only rule is uh, any, invite anybody, as many people as you want. We'll fill this place up, we'll pack it out, we'll open the doors and go to the street. The only rule is uh, and to be counted as a visitor for you for the prize, they have to have not been here in six months. That's the only rule. So you can invite 100 people, you can invite two people, uh, every how many you want to invite. But anyways, the winners of the most visitors on that Sunday morning, the uh, adult with the most visitors will get a prize, and the, and the child or the, the young person with the most is going to get a uh, prize. So with that being said, Aren't you excited? Amen. That's exciting. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have that band doubly, triply loaded. Praise the Lord. I know Lila. She likes to invite and bring people. So I'm, I'm counting on her to be working hard get some visitors, get some people for that day. Praise the Lord. So I count on you. Count on every one of you to be invited to be telling people to come out and worship the Lord. If you're standing with us tonight, a lot of exciting things happen. A lot of things are going to take place around here. Uh, God's moving. God's ministering. Hallelujah. You need to stay on board and hold on. Hang on and hang in like a hair in a biscuit because we, we're on a ride now. Praise the Lord. And we're going we're gonna to keep serving the Lord and we're going to move forward for God. 2 Kings chapter 5, beginning verse 1. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance into Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel, a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. She said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is in the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed, took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand pieces of gold, and ten changes of raiment. As he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is coming to thee, behold, I have here with said Naaman, my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. It came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he read his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make a lie that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore, consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh the quarrel against me. And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had read his clothes, and he sent to the king, saying, Where for? Has thou rent thy clothes? Let him, let him come down to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. <clears throat> Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me, to, to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Orphur, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather then when he said to thee, wash and be clean? Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. Heavenly Father, Come before you tonight, love you and praise you. Thank you one more time for an honest to be in your house to serve you and honor you, magnify your holy name. God, you've been so good to us. We can never praise you, never thank you enough for God. You've been good to us. Give us a time, a chance, an opportunity to be back to your house. Lord, ask the Lord to message the messenger, nor are used to hear our hearts receive God. Use us, mold us, make us, help us to be doing your will, your work. Lord, we love you. It's in your hands. We give you the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' holy name we pray. The church said, Amen. Amen. How to be great, or how to be what you need to be. How to be great. We measure greatness in many ways around our nation, around our country. 
we, we measure greatness. You know, uh, sometimes we measure greatness by how much money someone might have. We measure greatness by uh, how much personal property they might have. We measure greatness by, by this and by that. And we measure greatness by a lot of things. And as we look at this scripture, we understand that, and that Naaman, uh, as we look in the word of God, it says that he was a great man with his master. It tells us that he was uh, great, and he uh, he did what was good, and so he was great with his master. He was great uh, in the things that he did, and so he uh, he was a man. Naaman was a man that uh, that people looked uh, upon and saw that he was great, and saw that he was good, and he was what he needed to be, and saw that things were uh, and they saw that things were good with him, and was great, and he was what he needed to be, and, and he was uh, uh, doing the things he needed to do. And we see Naaman; he was he was just a wonderful. God, according to this, and because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria, he was a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. We understand that he was mighty, and he he, he was uh, he was good, and so he he was given Syria. He was in charge, and he was uh, victorious, and he was a winner. He was a he was in good shape. He was a great man, and everybody understood who he was and knew who he was. But he had one issue, and that issue was he had leprosy. He was a leper. And so we understand, and I want you to look tonight, I've got just a few points I want you to see of how we can be great like Nathan, how we can be uh, what we need to be for God. First of all, we've got to understand, we cannot let our uh, problem define who we are. We cannot let our problem define who we are. You see, Naaman was a leper, but he was still great according to his master. And Naaman was great. He was a mighty man of valor. He was willing to get out there and work and fight. And he caused his uh, people to be victorious because of his duties and because of what he did. But he had this problem. But you see, uh, he had to understand and he had to know that this came divine me. But you see, uh, he had to know that this came uh, uh, this came. Uh, be what determines who I am. It says in Assyrian, verse 2, and Assyrians had gone out by companies, had brought away cattle out of the land of Israel, little faith, and she waited on David's wife. She said to her, Mr. What would God my would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria for that would recover him of his leprosy? So not only did David see his leprosy, but everyone else understood that he was a leprosy. Leprosy was something, was a disease that, that people were supposed to stay away from other people. They were kind of cast out. They were uh, basically, if you will, they were thought to be like nobodies. And, but you see this man, David, he had leprosy, but he was still a somebody. Somebody took regard to him, and that somebody, the king, the one that was over the land, uh, he took, uh, he took, he knew that Naaman took charge and was a winner. And so he also understood that, you, that he couldn't let that, that problem define who he was. And so we live in a time in today's time that we've got a problem in the world and even in the church world and sometimes we let our problems define who we are. We let the things that goes on in our life that are bad or not like what we want or what we like to have define who we are. Let me tell you, even when he had leprosy, he was still a mighty man of valor. Even when he had leprosy, even when he, he might have seemed as an outcast to other people, he was still great and mighty. Hallelujah. He was the one that he needed to be to be victorious and to help those, uh, uh, help them uh, bring, uh, bring all the captive and, and be able to defeat and, and win. And so they brought this little maid uh, into captivity and she saw the need. She saw the situation. So she went into uh, Naaman's wife and she said, you know, I wish he was with the prophet. So she understood that just because he's got an issue, doesn't mean he's counting out. Doesn't mean that he's uh, 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 less of what God wants to be. You see, let me tell you tonight, hallelujah, no matter what issue or situation you've got in your life, you don't need to count yourself out because God's got a plan for you. God's got a job for you. God's got a way for you. And God will help you to be what you need to be. We've got to understand this. You see, he was a leper. This was a disease that caused problems with the body. This was a disease that discouraged no doubt hurt. Uh, there was problems. There was an issue. But even though he had this, it didn't have to affect everything about him. You see, it affected his skin because you could see the soul leprosy. You could see the scores and, and, the, and the disease. But you see, just because he had that on the outside didn't mean he had that on the inside. Didn't mean he had that going on on the inside. You see, hallelujah. It might look bad. Oh, help me, Jesus. It might look bad on the outside. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, it may, might seem rotten on the outside. It might seem something that we don't want no part of on the outside. But let me tell you, when you get down to the nitty-gritty, 
and you see the inside. You see, that's what Jesus did. Hallelujah. When he saved my soul, he didn't look on the outside of me. Hallelujah. He looked way down on the inside and he saw what I could be and what he could use me for. Let me tell you, God looks at the inside of man, not the outside of man. Hallelujah. Yeah, but you see, people, they want to look at the outside. They want to look at what's going on on the outside. Let me tell you, hallelujah, you can't judge a book by looking at the cover. It's what's inside. let his problem <clears throat> determine who he was. Hallelujah. Couldn't let his situation, this circumstance, this sickness, this problem, this ailment determine who he was. We have a lot of people today in today's time let their ailments determine who they are. Amen. Mm, help me, Jesus. Amen. Let their problems in life determine who they are. <clears throat> let their sickness determine who they are. Well, preacher, you know I've got this or I've got that. So since I've got this and I've got that, I'm just going to stay home and mull over my problems and just hold me on my. And God says, don't let your problems define who you are. Hallelujah. Might have the problem on the inside. Might have the disease on the inside. Might have the ailment on the inside or, or on the outside, either one. But hallelujah, just because there's an ailment or a problem there doesn't mean, hallelujah, that you gotta that you gotta be what that problem says you are. You know what? You might have the worst disease that there is in the world. You might have the worst problem in the world. You might have the least of anybody in the world, but let me tell you, your condition, hallelujah, does not have to determine who you are. Does not have to determine what you're going through. Hallelujah. And as far as what, what you're going through and being with God. Because you see, you might have mm, help me, Jesus. Hallelujah. You might have you might have been born and raised in the worst scenario of your of anybody's life. But let me tell you, it don't have to determine who you are for God. It don't have to determine what's going on in your life right now. It might have been bad and it might still be bad. But let me tell you, hallelujah, when you get God involved, you can be great. You can be awesome. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, you can be awesome. You can be awesome. Hallelujah. Because when God's involved, things turn out awesome. Things turn out good. What's the kids say? Awesome, awesome. <coughs> you see, we don't have to let it. He didn't have to let it define. Even though he had leprosy, he could still win a battle. Hallelujah. Even though, hallelujah, the doctor said something you don't like hearing. Hallelujah, you can still win the battle. Amen. Woo! There's no way you're going to get this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let God just work everything out. The baker might say one thing, but hallelujah. But God says you can be awesome. Hallelujah. Uh, the, 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 the boss man on the job. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The boss man on the job might say, well, you're not going to get that raise. But hallelujah. Or you're not going to get this or you're not going to get that. Let me tell you. Don't let that determine that you got victory on your mind, that you got winning on your mind, that you got leaving here on your heart. Hallelujah. That you're ready to go. You know what? The world is looking bad. The world is waxing worse and worse. People are getting meaner and meaner. Things are getting harder and harder. But let me tell you, just because we're in that situation or that circumstance, don't let that distract you. Don't let that, let that determine uh, you from knowing that one day you're going to leave and that trumpet tunes. You can scoop. Hallelujah. Let me tell you tonight. Jesus is coming back for a church for people that's looking for him. And I'm telling you tonight, don't let the surroundings around you determine who you are for God. The things around you determine your greatness for God. People, as I said earlier, they measure greatness in different things. Hallelujah. But I, in my personal opinion, I think one of the things that makes people great is the faith and determination they have right. towards God. Yes. People are, it, it, help, it shows a person is great when they have faithfulness to God. Determination. You see, we live in a time when people are taking God for granted. Oh, yes. <coughs> people are taking God for granted. People are taking things for granted. People are, you know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. 
Hallelujah. They put God on a shelf until they need Him. You know, kind of like, hallelujah, I'm not going to do Kind of like some in society are going with the police. They cuss them. Don't want them. Don't want to do with them. Don't want anything until they need them. That's right. Come on, right? That's the way we have turned on God. Don't need God until there's a problem right. Hallelujah. I thank God that he's God and I'm not. Hallelujah. Because if I was, some of these people would never get a blessing. The way they treat, the way they treat God. I'm just being honest. Being brutally honest. People in the day's time treat God like it's leftover trash. Hallelujah. They treat him terribly. But you know what? I'm still on the subject. Even though they treat God bad and terrible, we don't have to let that determine who we are for God. Amen. Hallelujah. We can be grateful God. We can praise God. And we can honor God. And we can be the people God's called us to be. We don't have to let the circumstances determine who we are and what's going on. Hallelujah. What's taking place in our life. You know, and we look around. <coughs> And I hear it time and time again. Well, because this happened when I was growing up, or that happened when I was, or this happened, or that happened. That's why I do this now. I hear that you hear that all the time. Let me tell you, people have a choice daily. Yes. Amen. Amen. People have a choice daily. I, I, I'm not going to meddle much there. That's true. But I'll get that another time. They, they, if people have a choice daily, and they can be grateful, God. Or they, let me just point blank and say, they can be a loser for the devil. Be great for God or a loser for the you, you, you ever seen a picture? Anybody ever watch wrestling from my dog? I watch wrestling. Yeah. You know, you remember, you remember, that, remember that wrestler, Hacksaw Jack <laughs> Oh, tough guy. Remember that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, I, I like that. I remember that guy. But anyway, you know how you watch a wrestler on, on movies or something? And you see people, you know, they'll look at somebody and do that. That's saying they're a loser, right? That's what that means. They're a loser. Well, you know what? That's what the devil is. He's a loser. Amen. The devil's a loser. And all the people, I'm just going to point blank say it. Hallelujah. I'm feeling good tonight. All the people that serve the devil, that don't serve God, the ones that serve the devil, are losers. Hallelujah. All across this world, all across this land. Hallelujah. I hope the whole nation is watching tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because anybody that serves the devil is a loser. Anybody that serves the devil is a liar, just like them. Like the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me tell you tonight, God said we can be great. God said we can be awesome. Hallelujah. If Naaman, hallelujah, can still be great. And he had leprosy. Don't you think if your big toe hurts, you can still be great for God? Hallelujah. Don't you think if you got a headache tonight, you can still be great for God? Don't you think, hallelujah, if you got a situational problem that's arising in your life, that you can still be great for God? Secondly, I like this one. Don't <coughs> worry about man's opinion. Uh -oh, Naaman. Uh, Hallelujah. Yeah, right. Naaman wanted to be healed. He didn't like being a leper. He didn't like having this problem in his life. He didn't like what was going on in his life. He didn't like this disease. He wanted to be healed. And when this lady comes to him, he said, no way, he needs to be over there with, uh, with Elisha. And so his Lord, his leader, his master, Naaman goes, he takes a letter with him, he goes to the king and, and takes this letter and, and begins to and begins to talk to the uh, to the king, and begins to talk to him. He brought the letter to the king of Israel saying, Now when this letter is coming to thee, behold, I have there with sent Naaman, my servant to thee, thou mayest receive him, <coughs> recover him of his leprosy. And so he said this, and he, he wanted to be delivered. He sent this letter, so he goes to the king, uh, he goes to the king of Israel, and he goes and King of Syria had sent this, sent this letter with him. And Naaman, uh, he took, he had gold, he had silver, and he had raiment. <laughs> he had gold, he had silver, he had raiment, and he had a letter. He had everything he needed. He was on his way. He took everything that it would cost. 
He took everything that you could imagine. He took everything that he might need. And all he wanted to do was be healed. And so the king of Syria sent him over there to the king of uh, uh, king of Israel. And, and, and so as he went, uh, as he went to this man, as he went to this king, the, the king, uh, you, know, you know, the first thing he done, he read his clothes. He tore his clothes because he got upset. He said, what am I God now that I can make you live or I can make you not? And he begins to, he begins to uh, be on him. He begins to uh, kind of discourage. He kind of, he gets upset and he gets mad because the letter of the king uh, begins to, uh, begins to be discouraging towards Naaman. He begins to, uh, uh, he begins to uh, uh, talk down, if you will. He begins to be uh, just negative and derogatory. He, he, hallelujah. He was trying to be negative next with, not next here, but negative next. You know what I'm saying? He was trying to be negative in the situation. The king sent Naaman. Naaman comes with all the money, all the, the silver, the gold, the raiment, and the letter. And now the king's upset. Man, tears his clothes. I tell you, I've been mad before, but I ain't never ripped clothes. By, because of being mad. You know, rip a clothes sometimes because they, they somehow they shrunk in the closet, you know. <laughs> somehow. <laughs> that long and turned it. But, but, but he, he, he gestured a question. He said, am I God? That's what the king said. King, come out and just, just, just discourage you. Just, you know, kind of, you know, if you're going to uh, try to get some help, and somebody said, well, what, am I God? And just, just kind of give you that look. And, and you would like, well, I've just come trying to get some help. This lady said I could come over here and get some help. Uh, hallelujah. I could come over here and things will be, uh, will be fixed. And so uh, this discouraging remarks and these discouraging times and this discouragement uh, that, that the king was, was given towards Naaman, no doubt it was a discouraging. And it was, his bad, it was just a bad time and, and a bad situation. Naaman's the one with leprosy, but this king is talking ugly to him. Then Naaman's the one with leprosy, but this king is uh, not one to help him or not want to do anything, he's getting upset and he's not the one with that say name it is. You know, that's kind of the way people in the world will do us. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going through a problem and ask, ask for help and they just want to negative. Well, you've been serving God for so long, why don't he heal you? <laughs> don't they say that? Oh, yeah. Well, you've been, you've been going to church and, and doing right. What's wrong with you? Kind of like others. Have you sinned? Have you went against God? That's what they'll say. People, people will come there, they'll throw in their opinion. Well, well, you see, I, I, I told you, you, you just shouldn't even worry about going to church and serve Lord because you, you're just going to go through these problems. That's what people say. The negative attitudes, the negative demeanors will come. But let me tell you, hallelujah, God says don't worry about their opinion. Don't worry about what man says. You think about what God said. God said, by his stripes, we are healed. God said, hallelujah, he was the way maker. He would make a way in the wilderness. Hallelujah, in the deserts. He makes straight. We understand. Listen tonight. Hallelujah. God came sent me by to tell you that you don't have to worry about man's opinion in your life. You just worry about serving God. You just be praying for God. Let God move in your life. Let God help you in your scenario, in your situation. Don't worry about what man says. <laughs> You know how sometimes, hallelujah, help me, Lord. You know how sometimes you tell somebody, well, a doctor said this about me. Well, just, just, let me just give you an example. Well, I went to the doctor today, sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so. Doctor says I got high blood pressure. And the first thing they say, or want to say is, well, you better listen. You're going to die. High blood pressure will kill you. High blood pressure will give you all these problems. Hey, just look it up on the internet. Isn't that the way to do it? They say, look at all these issues. Look at all these problems. Look at all the things. That's... Hallelujah. Just because the doctor says one thing. That's right. Don't mean, hallelujah, that it's got to be bad. Hallelujah. Don't mean it's got to be bad. Let me tell you, hallelujah. Or you maybe you go to the doctor, and the doctor says, you've got this going on. You tell you tell somebody else. I said, "Oh man, that's bad. That's terrible." You know what? Whatever happened to being positive? Hallelujah! You can have the worst thing in the world, but I don't have to be negative to discourage you. I can say, "You know what? God's still in control." I can say, "You know what? God's still going to help you. God's still going to work in your life." Hallelujah! 
That's like Brother Danny, I, I, blood pressure uh, don't stay regulated a lot of times, but you know what? He still trusts God and believes God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not good. Blood pressure needs to stay regulated because when he's not, he feels bad. And he, he's told me he feels bad sometimes and stuff like that. But praise God. Hallelujah. He don't concentrate on, uh, I mean, he comes in here and worships more. He don't concentrate on, oh, on how bad he might feel or what <coughs> might take place. He just believes God's going to touch his blood pressure and help him to get regulated wherever it needs to be. Hallelujah. Sister Hattie come in tonight. Hallelujah. She didn't have that grace on. I said, Sister, he ain't got that grace. She said, she said, no, I don't want to put that thing on. I said, praise God. Hallelujah. You know what? Hallelujah. Uh, the doctor or the medical condition might say you do this and do that. But let me tell you, God says you can be great. Hallelujah. Don't worry about the, uh, the negative or man's opinion. Don't worry about what man says that's negative in your life. Just listen to God. Amen. Let God go. Let God work in your life. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it's easier said than done. Because I know we've all heard war stories. I'm not talking about physical war. I'm talking about where people went through this or went through that situation. We've heard these things. But you know what? Hallelujah. God is still God. The same God that said, let there be. And he created everything in six days on the seventh day rested. That same God is the same God that I serve today. Hallelujah. My God is not in a tomb. He's not in a box somewhere, and he's not on a shelf somewhere. My God is alive and well. He's omnipresent, omnipotent. He's everywhere at all times. Hallelujah. And he can meet your need and my need at the same moment, at the same time. Hallelujah. Uh, don't, you, don't you let man discourage you. Don't you let man uh, uh, get you, uh, get you uh, discouraged. You know? Hallelujah. That's what, that's what happened in a lot of situations this past year. With that pandemic called the COVID. Not taking it away from it's bad. It's not good. But a lot of people listen more to man's opinion than listen to God, what God said. Yes. God said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes, you may get sick. I may get sick. With anything, I'm not talking just the COVID. I'm talking about anything. But my God, he would my God said he wouldn't leave me. He wouldn't forsake me. He'd be with me to the end of the world. So you know what? If my God's not going to leave me, then I might go through a problem or a trial. But you know what? I don't have to. I don't have to listen to somebody telling me God's left my left my side and not with me. Let me tell you, I can tell them they can keep their mouth shut because they lie. Because my God said He would be right there with me. These naysayers out in the world, these people out in the world, uh, and you know, they call themselves Christians across the land. Uh, they, they, they're just negative about this and negative about that. Let me tell you, they they must not be serving the same God that we serve. Because my God that we serve says, Hallelujah, I will be with you. I will be there. I will be for you and not against you. If my God be for me, who can be against me? Amen. That's what we've got to do. Hallelujah. That's what we've got to do. Keep believing. Keep trusting. Keep trusting. Yes, things look bad in our life sometimes. But don't let the negative overload the greatness you can be. That's what Naaman didn't do. He, he, he sure came discouraged him. And he could have gotten to a negative spot in his life. Could have gotten to a negative place in his life. But, but he, he, he needed to hold on. Just like we need to hold on. And not let it, de not let it determine him. Not let it, not let it uh, change who he is. Not let it uh, depict him. Uh, as far as what's, uh, what, what was going on in his life. Not let it depict how good he was for God. And not, not let man's opinion override God's opinion. You see, that's what's wrong with the world. Man, people in church, Christians across the world, have allowed man's opinion to mean more than God's opinion. Amen. Oh, help me, Jesus. Preacher, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, let me just help somebody. I'm glad you said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> man's opinion, what was it, 1973? Said it's all right to abort a baby. Roe versus Wade, wasn't it? Yeah. It's a woman's right to abort a baby, is what they say. <coughs> Man's opinion. God's opinion says not to forbid the children to come unto him. He didn't mean in that scripture kill them and let them, let them go to him. He meant to bring them to him in his house. Train them up the way they need to go. You see, man's opinion started overriding God's opinion years ago. 
Well, let me just help you. Some 2,000 years ago, the people, the high priest, and the different ones were going <coughs> ask, who do you want me to release? And they cried out, Barabbas. Mm -hmm. They didn't want Jesus. And man's opinion took hold then instead of God's opinion. It was God's only begotten son. Mm -hmm. But man's opinion took hold then. And they crucified him. Our Savior that is alive and well led that is risen. Because they thought that man's opinion was going to override God. But let me tell you in the end, God's opinion is the only opinion that matters. Mm -hmm. Because God is the only one that's going to get us out of here alive. Mm -hmm. God's the only one that's got an eternal home, an eternal good home for us. Now, now you know, the soul is going to live somewhere for eternity. But hallelujah, those that the, those that miss out on heaven, they're in a horrible place. But you see, those that I was thinking today <coughs> about it's going to be so wonderful there. In heaven, we will have to put up with the devil. The devil is proud. Amen. We've got to put up with negative. Everything in heaven is going to be positive. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Hallelujah. No negative this and negative that. Everything's going to be positive. Because all about God. Let's see, uh, let's see what's that song? The skeptics have no place at all. The mourners' bench won't be there. There won't be no prayers <coughs> over wayward loved ones. Because if they missed it, because if they missed it, they missed it. When we no more prayers over that, you know what it's going to be? So we're praising God. Hallelujah. All, only those that listen to God's word and God's opinion over man's opinion is going to make it. Because man says, do what you want to, live like you want to, it's all right. God says you you be holy for he which has called you is holy. God said holiness is my standard of living. God said holiness is the way that we're supposed to live and act and do. And, and you got to follow by my words. Hallelujah. Follow by these commandments. He says that's what God the Lord said. The world says don't worry about the commandments. It don't mean much. That's what the world says. But let me tell you, and even in the church world, a lot of people are saying the commandments don't mean much. Let me tell you, the commandments mean everything. Because without the commandments and without listening to the commandments, we won't make it to heaven. Like Brother George said tonight, if you don't love him, you can't make it to heaven. That's exactly right. If we don't love one another, we can't make it to heaven. We can't get there. All these people in this world with hatred and ill will, all these people that's got all to get somebody else, if they don't get that right before it's too late and they draw the last breath, they're not going to make it to heaven. I'm sorry. I didn't write the word of God. God did. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've got to heed what God says. Amen. Keep pressing on we can be great. Thirdly, we got to put feet to the knee. Feet to the knee. Oh, Naaman. Hallelujah. He sent down to Elisha. Elisha sent his servant and says, tell me to go wash in Jordan seven times. Naaman got wrong. Got mad. Because it wasn't a prophet that came talk to him. You know, kind of like, well, the preacher did him shake my hand. Oh. You know, kind of that scenario. Well, the prophet didn't even come talk to me. Didn't even come speak to me. Yeah. Hallelujah. The name of the servant said, you know, what, you know what would you do if you had to do some great thing? You know, like this. And so finally, the name of the says, all right. <coughs> so they started walking towards Jordan. Now Jordan wasn't the cleanest river, wasn't the cleanest place, but that's where he was going. How he had to wash seven times. Let me tell you what he had to do. First of all, he had to put self aside. As he walked down to that river Jordan, he had to put self aside and say, Self, you need to go down here and take a dip. You need to go down here and just dip in this water. This prophet, this man of God says, you need to do this. Sends word. You know, he didn't even talk to me, but I'm not going to go this one myself. Self said, you better get out of that water. Don't you go that water. He didn't even have common decency to come talk to you. Don't you even worry about it. Oh, hallelujah. That preacher didn't even shake my hand. I'm not going back to that church. Come on. Help me, Jesus. That preacher didn't preach something that made me feel good. I'm not going back to that church. Oh, it didn't tickle my ears. I'm not going back to that church. Help me, Jesus. He had to put self to the side. You see, self says, I, I, you, don't go back. The preacher wouldn't even talk to you. Or, 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 or don't, don't, don't do that, Naaman. Don't do that, Naaman. Elisha wouldn't even have, wouldn't even have decency to come talk to you. Don't you go in that water. That's what it said. But Naaman, he said, Self, I got to put you to the side. And he walked on. Next, hallelujah, he had to swallow his pride. Oh, yeah. Pride says, I'm not doing it. Naaman, no doubt Naaman thought, I'm not doing it. If Elisha can't tell me himself, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. 
but he had to push pride back. He had to push pride where, 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 where he was thinking bad, or he was thinking negative, or he was upset about this, or upset about that. He had to push that pride back. So you know what? If that's what God desires for me to do, or God needs for me to do, or the prophet said for, sent a word for me to do, that's what I'm going to do. Well, you know what? The preacher had never asked me to sing special, so I'm never going to sing special. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Ma'am ma or sir, <coughs> will you sing special? No. No, I won't do it. It's called pride. Hallelujah. You see, what Naaman had to do is swallow that pride that because of <coughs> what he thought, because of how it seemed, because of how it might be, or how someone might predict it to be, or put it in perspective to be, he had to push pride to the side and say, you know what? I'm going down to this nasty river and I'm going to dip. Time number two. Hallelujah. Thirdly, he had to put his faith in God. Amen. Well, you know, this man says, we come down here to this nasty water and dip. I don't know if this is going to help me or not. No doubt Naaman could have been thinking that. But he had to put his faith in God that something's going to change. If this man of God is going to go, I need to go. And so something tells me that he had to have a little, size of grain of mustard seed, a little bit of faith to even go to start with. He had to have a little faith in God for him to even push pride down, self down, and say, you know what, I'm going to, I, I'm going to go deal. You know, kind of like, kind of like when the preacher gives the altar call. And says, if you have a need, come to the altar and pray. We have to have a little bit of faith in God to step out and go to the altar, right? Or to, or, or to get on our, hand, our knees and pray and see God's face. So we got to have a little faith. That's, that's what he had, a little faith. He had to trust in God's guidance. He had to trust in God's man. As he's walking at the full time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's one, two, three. He had to keep believing. He had to keep trusting. He had to understand that this man was trying to help him. He might have sent a messenger to tell him, but hallelujah, the man was in tune with God. He had to realize he had to have faith and trust in God, but he had to have faith and trust in the man of God, and he had to believe God was on the throne. God was willing to help. Now, I know there's more than seven there, but he had to, he had, God had to, hey, he knew God had to be the one to do it because man couldn't do it. And could man have healed the leprosy, he would have done that heal. Because remember, he had silver, gold, <laughs> so if somebody came up to you and gave you a bunch of silver wouldn't you be willing to help them somebody come up to you and gave you a bunch of gold wouldn't you be willing to help them somebody come up and gave you a bunch of brand new clothes whatever kind you like whatever brand name you like wouldn't you, want to help, wouldn't you be willing to help them but you see that king that name went to the start couldn't help him because he wasn't God only God could help this man. And we live in a time where people's got to understand we've got to put our faith back in God instead of man because it's God that's going to help us. It's God that's going to lead us through. It's God that's going to reward us. It's God that's going to bring us through. So he went and he dipped seven times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He dipped seven times. As he went in and as he came out. As he went in as he come out. As he went in as he come out. Seven times this man had to do this. Now I know it might have looked crazy. I know it might have looked weird. I know it might have seemed just off the wall, but let me tell you, sometimes God uses off the wall things to get us to see that we're going to trust Him and believe Him, and He's going to use those off the wall things to get our attention so we'll serve Him and be what He wants to be. Because guess what happened after a seventh time? Guess what happened to Him? He came up clean. Hallelujah. He came up what He needed to be, what He had been seeking after, what He had been desiring, what He had been wanting. He got it after the seventh time. You see, sometimes, uh, hallelujah, we got to get back to the place to where we keep going to God. If you don't get it the first time, keep going the second time. If you don't get it the second time, keep going the third time. Let me tell you, persistence pays off. Hallelujah. Just like a kid in a candy store. They might not get that candy bar they want the first time, but, but if they go get uh, Poppy or Mimi, Poppy or Mimi's going to get it for them, right? Hallelujah. They might not get it the first time, but they're going to get it sometime. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, you might not get it from God the first time, but if you'll keep pressing it, if you'll keep going to Him, hallelujah, if you'll keep reaching out to God, He'll give all you got to do is ask. All you got to do is believe. Hallelujah. Sometimes we do not have 
because we do not do. Sometimes we do not have because we do not do. We ask God for a lot of things, but when God asks us to do something, we sit like knots on logs. Hallelujah. When we, we ask God to do this and God to do that, but when God says, I need you to do this for me, we clam up, we freeze up, and we don't do it. So sometimes in our life, we don't have what we need or what we're desiring because we haven't been doing for God, because we haven't been being for God what he's called us to be. You see, to be great, we've got to make sure we're not defined by our problems. Secondly, we cannot worry about what man says. And thirdly, we've got to put action to our desires. We're going to put our feet in the street. If you desire, hallelujah, to win lost souls, then you need to be reaching out and testifying. If you desire, hallelujah, to live for God the best you can, you need to be doing what God tells you to do. If you desire, hallelujah, to be filled with the Holy Ghost, you need to be seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If you desire to be sanctified, you need to ask God to help you to be sanctified and keep seeking sanctification. Hallelujah. If you want your a child, grandchild, loved one, friend, neighbor, communion member, whatever, saved, you need to be doing something about it. You need to be praying about it, uh, talking to God before them, and you need to be telling them, hallelujah. You see, sometimes, uh, sometimes we don't pray. Mm, sometimes we don't get those visitors in church because we have asked those visitors to come. Well, I wonder why the neighbor down the street hadn't been to church over there. Well, who asked him to come? Who asked her to come? See? We've got to put our feet to the street. If we want to be great in the world, I'm not talking about boastful, prideful, or on our pedestal. I'm talking about if we want to be the person God desires us to be, we're going to put action to our desires. Whatever we desire, we need to put action to it. Hallelujah. You see, you know the difference in proactive and reactive. Proactive is doing something about it before, the, before something occurs. Reactive is when something occurs, doing something about it then. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We need to be proactive. We need to be reactive. We want lost souls one. We need to be talking to lost souls. Instead of waiting on lost souls to come to us. The devil's got so many things in this world to get people's attention. So many things in this world to get people's eyes to look at on other things besides God. So we need to be reaching out. We need to be going out. Outside of our four walls and talking to people. Say, hey, hallelujah, do you want to be for God what he wants you to be? Pray with them. Talk to them. Invite them to church. Tell them whatever, whatever the case. Testify to them. Hallelujah. Testimony. Every one of you has got a story. got a testimony. Every one of you. Multiple testimonies. Did you know that those testimonies are for you just to keep harbored up in your little box? They're for you to be able to share with somebody else what you went through. Right. What you've been through is to share with somebody else that's going through the same thing or something similar or a problem themselves that you can help them get through it. Because if God got you through your problem, don't you think he can get them through their problem? Right. Amen. 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 So you can be great, but you've got to really realize and understand we've got to put action to our words. We've got to put action to our word. We've got to do what God calls us to be. Sister Nancy, would you come? What God calls us to be, what God desires us to be, we've got to put action. Action. So I ask you tonight, how great do you want to be for God? Do you want to be awesome to where He can count on you? To where when your problem comes up, it might hurt, it might be painful, it might be just a scenario you don't like, but you know God's going to get you through it. You want to be awesome like that? Or do you want to just be awesome when things is going great? And then when you, things are going bad in your life, you're going to be down in the dumps and you're going to be negative in the old me, oh my stage. God's looking for some people that will say, you know what? I want to be great for you, God. It might take seven times of dipping in Jordan. It might take ten times of dipping. It might take 45 times going to the altar saying, God, I need this. I need this. It might take a hundred times. Nonetheless, no matter how many times it takes, keep going to God. No matter how many times you pray for that lost soul, keep going to God.
Because just think about this. How many times does somebody go to God on our behalf? I would about guarantee, I don't know, have no statistics, but I would about guarantee every one of us didn't, didn't get saved after the only one prayer from somebody. Somebody was praying for us multiple times, multiple occasions, probably multiple people. So you see, we got to put action, action to our desires. What do you desire from God? What do you desire from God? We can ask ourselves tonight, whatever it is I desire, why have I not gotten it yet? Maybe it's something to do with us. Maybe it's not. I don't know this between you and God. But what I will tell you tonight, God sent me by to tell you, you can be awesome for Him. You can be awesome for Him. God is still on the throne. God is still alive and well. God is looking down at you and I tonight, loving us. He loves us more than we love ourselves. And I don't know about you, but I love me. But God loves me more than I love me. Isn't that awesome that God loves you more than you love yourself? Thank God. He loves His church. And He wants us to be great for Him. So tonight, we're just home folk, we're family. As we pray in just a moment, pray His final prayer. Ask God to help you to be great. If you've been struggling with something in your life, whatever it is, I'm mean, if it's sin, ask the Lord to forgive you. If it's a situation, talk to the Lord about whatever you've been struggling with. Release it to God and ask God, how can I be great over this situation? And know that that situation you're facing does not determine who you are for God. God doesn't look at your situation to determine how much He's going to bless you or how much He loves you. He looks at you. You see, He didn't say that, 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 he, that those with less uh, problems in their life, He numbered the ha very hairs of their head. He said He numbered the very hairs of their head. He told me everybody. He loves everybody. He loves you tonight. And He loves me tonight. He loves me tonight. He's no respecter of persons. He'll do for you what he's done for me or vice versa. God wants to help us tonight. So if there's a situation in your life that has been burdening you down or has has uh, kind of determined or made you feel like uh, feel negative about yourself or about uh, about situation or about serving God, whatever the case, talk to God tonight. God wants to help you. God wants to bless you, and God wants to use you for His glory and His name's sake. We can't let our problems define who we are. We can't worry about what man's opinion is, and we've got to make sure that we put action to what we desire from God. If you'll stand with us tonight, when we pray, just talk to God. If there's anyone here, anyone watching that's not saved, that's lost and undone and don't know Jesus, I know He's pricking your heart right now because there's never been a message when I told the Lord. And he wants to save you. He wants to bless you. All you got to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. Come to my life and cleanse me and change me. And he'll mold you and make you. And he'll change you. Come into your life and, and make you what you need to be. All the others, just pray that God will help you to be great and awesome for him. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight loving you and praising you. God, you've been so good to us. I thank you for this message, Lord. I thank you for touching our hearts. I thank you for stirring us up, God. I thank you for moving them over. Lord, we live in a society in a time where people are, are negative to one another. People are negative uh, about things in their own lives. And, and sometimes we get discouraged we get distraught. But God, you showed us through this story of David how, uh, how even though he had leprosy, he was still a mighty man of valor. He was still uh, great according to his master. And Lord, we see the story of David how he went. He could have been discouraged because the king ran his clothes and began to say things to him. But he, but he went and he, he went to, uh, to find Elisha. And then, and then he got upset because Elisha's servant come to him and still Elisha. But still, David followed the rules, followed the directions. And he went and he went down to uh, the river Jordan and he did seven times and came out clean because he was on the throne then and you're on the throne today. God, I ask you to touch each and every life, each and every heart, Lord. If there's anyone here or sound of my voice from home, live stream or viewing this week that's lost and done, help them to be saved and be right before it's everlasting too late. Touch their life, touch their heart and soul. Help them to get their hearts right and tune with you. Lord, all of the other ones, Lord, everybody that's ready to go to heaven no matter what, Lord, you're, they're ready, they're waiting, watching and praying. God, I ask you to help us to be great for you. Lord, help us not get discouraged and dismayed. Help us to not get worried about uh, what's going on in our life. But Lord, help us to give it to you, God, and let you take care of it. Lord, help us to go if it takes 45 times of dipping at the altar. Lord, help us to be
be willing to do that. Lord, help us to put our feet to the stream, Lord, and be what you have us to be. Lord, whatever we desire, help us to put action to those desires and be what you desire us to be, God. Just reach out and touch every heart and every life, Lord. Man, tonight, encourage everyone. Help us to be doing your will and be what you have us to be and do what you have to do. Help us to be the people you count on, the people you that you know. Hallelujah, that you can call upon. God, help us to be your will and best your will and service. Lord, help us not be uh, dictated by our problems. Help us not be who we are, not be determined or defined by our problems. But Lord, help us to be Christians like we're supposed to be. Help us to be ch children of the King. Hallelujah, like we're supposed to be. And still let the problems decide who we are, determine who we are. Lord, help us to not worry about man's opinion, but listen to your laws and listen to what you say. God, you created the Word of God. You allowed it to be wrote for so that we can have a roadmap. God, help us to stand by your word and stand by your commandments and live for you and do your will. Lord, I ask you to go with each and every one. Keep them safe and watch over. Lord, all those that are here, whatever is it, touch them. And bless them, Lord, all the ones. Hallelujah tonight. And uh, watch a live stream. Keep them safe as they go about it in different ways. Lord, just reach down and bless. Lord, send the people from the north, south, east, and west. Lord, continue to bless us. Lord, do we be your people and go forth and do your will. We love you tonight. Lord, help us understand that no matter how big or how small the problem, God, you're still in control. You're still alive and well. We love you tonight. Give you praise, glory, and honor. Thank you for all things. Jesus, holy name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming tonight. Always remember Jesus loves you. Pastor David loves you as well. Don't forget to sign up the visitation sheets and uh, look forward to seeing you Sunday morning. God bless you. We love you.